So as we're heading back towards all of the wonderful tall buildings ahead of us, some of you might have noticed that there is a much shorter building right next to us. It is curvy. It's drawing people to the riverfront. It's got yacht parking. It's our good friend Bertrand Goldberg back again. That same architect who designed a marina city, this was his second attempt at a city within a city. He called this one River City. The guy had a type. He liked what he liked, but he was very good at designing it. And he's not on this boat today, but we have a deckhand who works here who lives in this building. And so I asked him, did he have any cool facts, any interesting things that you can only find out from living here? And he said it's hard to hang things on the walls. So there you have it. Everything you need to know about this building. He was not very helpful. But you probably did not come here for this building. And you definitely did not come here for Jordan's boring story. You came here for something else, something bigger, something better, something like the royal family of Chicago. Not those merchant princes. This is the king, the queen, and the princess. And we will start with the queen. The octagonal shaped building right ahead of you with the round barrels on top resembling a queen's crown or a queen chess piece. Or a bunch of cups up there. Where can you find cups? At the bar downstairs, where Ray needs to be kept busy or he's going to lose his mind, so go visit him. That is 311 South Wacker. She debuted in 1990, and every night since, her crown has lit up the night sky. Unfortunately, it also lights up the night sky for birds flying through, minding their own business. The birds are attracted to the light, they mistake it for the moon, and they crash right into it. So we now dim the lights for any major bird migrations. In fact, because of this building, all of Chicago dims their lights for bird migrations. It just works out better that way. Now the princess is the Art Deco building on your right with a statue on top. That is the Chicago Board of Trade. And the statue is the Roman goddess of agriculture and grain, Ceres. That's where we get the word cereal from. Mmm, cereal, a food that you put with milk, a drink. Where can you drink? At the bar downstairs where Ray needs to be kept busy or he's going to lose his mind. At this, I'm just seeing how many buildings I can connect back to the bar, so get used to that. Um, now, some of you might recognize the Board of Trade if you saw Batman at the Dark Knight, because that is Wayne Enterprise. However, in real life, as the Chicago Board of Trade, that was the tallest building on our skyline for 35 years. From 1930 to 1965, that building towered above all these others. You might have noticed, it's not doing that anymore. If you did not notice that, you certainly will on the other side of this bridge. Because here he comes now, it's the king of Chicago himself, the Sears Willis Tower. The prime example of black box modernism in our city. He is tall, dark, and handsome. And oh boy, is he tall. That was the tallest building in the world from 1974 to 1998. 24 years is a long time to hold that title. Uh, but how do they build it so tall? Well, I don't like to think of it as one building. I like to think of it as nine smaller buildings grouped together at the bottom. They rise up, holding each other together as they go, making the whole structure stronger. Because you can see only two of those smaller buildings make it to its full height at the top. The full height up there is 110 stories, 442 meters, or 1,451 feet. Now that is still the tallest building in Chicago. It is not the tallest building in the world anymore. That honor currently falls to the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. That building is a little over half a mile high. For reference, that is two Sears Towers stacked on top of each other. That is a very tall building. But why else should you care about it? Well, the Burj Khalifa was designed by Adrian Smith. That's the same Chicago architect who designed Trump Tower, which means Chicago is home to the world's tallest architect. Because of the buildings he designs. In real life, he is 5'7", he's a medium-sized king. Now we have seen quite a few buildings today. We've made a couple of turns. If you're feeling a little lost, that's perfectly understandable. But hopefully this building on your right will help because this is the map building. 
This gray piece closest to us is a map of the Chicago River. That red block in the middle is this building. It is a giant you are here sign, so I never get lost when I'm right in this spot on the river. But the map is a newer addition. This building added it because they were upset that nobody was talking about them on architecture boat tours. So they spent $800,000 putting themselves on the map by putting the map on themselves. Did it work? Well, I didn't tell you the name of the building, so I'd say no, that's a waste of $800,000. Just kidding, 300 South Wacker it is just not a cool name for a building. But now I feel like I should address the elephant in the room, the Sears or Willis Tower. This is a very contentious debate among Chicagoans because they're a stubborn and nostalgic group of people. So they're still calling it the Sears Tower, the original name for the building. However, in 2009, Willis Insurance began leasing the naming rights. It has been Willis Tower ever since. Personally, I would say what you call it. But if you want to look local, Sears is the way to go. And if you're looking up at the top right now, you can see those glass boxes sticking out the side. That is the sky deck. If you are brave enough to do so, you can step out into those boxes and look down past your feet over a thousand feet below you. That's why you're looking up. I hope you're smiling because people are taking pictures of you. Now, if you are wondering, the tallest building in the country is not in Chicago. It's One World Trade Center in New York City. It stands at a very patriotic height of 1,776 feet. However, the roof of the Sears Tower is taller than the roof of One World Trade Center. How can this be? Well, according to the Council of Tall Buildings, which is a real group of people allowed to make real-world decisions, a building is measured from its lowest open-air entryway to the very top of the structure. So buildings like Trump Tower, One World Trade Center, generally newer buildings, they have spires on top. These spires are aesthetically part of the building, and they count towards height. Buildings like the Sears Tower have antenna. That's mechanical equipment. It does not count towards height. This is disappointing to say the least, because those antenna are 280 feet tall. How tall is 280 feet? as tall as Gateway Center 1. So that building is just the height of an antenna. That is a lot of height for the Sears Tower to be missing out on. Now finally, my favorite fact about the building, then I'll stop talking about it. The outside of the Sears Tower has been scaled without equipment successfully twice. The first time it was done by Dan Goodwin. He was armed only with suction cups and a Spider-Man suit, so he is known lovingly as Spider-Dan. The second time it was climbed by Alain Robert, known as the French Spider-Man. However, he had no suction cups, no Spider-Man suit, no equipment at all. He climbed the building by wedging his hands around the windows, and he made it all the way to the top in an hour and 20 minutes. And what do these two brave men get for this daring accomplishment? Arrested! Do not climb buildings, people! I actually found out recently, while Spider-Dan was climbing the building, he got part way up, the fire department got there, they were at the top of the building, and they said, stay right there, we will rescue you, and he said, don't worry about it, it'll be faster if I just climb up myself. So he climbed up the building while the firefighters cheered for him, and then immediately arrested him at the top. He went to jail, he got out for $25, so it is a cheap crime, but it is a very dangerous one. Please do not climb buildings. Now on your right, we have the Civic Opera building, and it is meant to look like a giant throne. And the opera part of the building is in the seat of the throne. Backstage is right against that wall. That's why there's no windows. But the arms of the back of the throne are offices. This was done so the offices could finance the opera, which is a great idea. Except this building opened two weeks after the stock market crashed in the 1920s. Some very poor timing. It fell into disuse, but things are looking up. It's currently home to the Lyric Opera. And if you look on the side, you can see it says Civic Opera Bevilding. Don't worry, they spelled it wrong on purpose. That is because Latin has 23 letters. U and V used to be combined. They weren't separated until the 1600s. So this 1920s building was referencing that. But they truly have no excuse to spell it wrong because that writing is only about 40 years old. So someone just wanted to look a little fancy.
And speaking of buildings that wanted to look fancy, on your left we have the Boeing building. But this wasn't always Boeing's building. It used to be Morton International. That's the salt company. And if you look up at the top, you can see a steel plate with holes cut out of it. And that is a bit of postmodernism. Postmodernism is a style all about doing creative, playful, interesting things with the structure. And Morton designed this building, so when you're looking down from above, it looks like a giant salt shaker. Very fun thing for them to do. Now, I've been changing around what I talk about at this point on the tour, seeing what people like, what they don't like. Recently, I've been talking about Batman. It feels pretty safe. People seem to really like Batman. And we've seen some filming locations already. We saw the bank, which was really the post office. We saw Wayne Enterprise, which was 